Thank you so much, Brittany. As we continue the conversation, this is uh, Dell EMC World 2017. It's really remarkable the, the breadth and scope of the event and what's gone on in the last several years to get us here. Uh, VMware has been a big part of that. Sanjay Poonin, thanks for being with us. COO of VMware. Uh, it's so seven, I keep losing my year. It's not 2018 yet. It's because so many things seem futuristic. Um, day one, October. Dell EMC World to this spring and this May, Dell EMC World. I spoke to you, Dell, day one. You're wearing the t-shirt underneath the suit, by the way? Yeah, not oh. quite, but I do, I do remember day one. A very feisty crowd in Palo Alto. <laughs> I'm led by somebody who was getting fired up, which we appreciate a great deal. So with your role there at VMware as COO, sort of illuminate that for folks that maybe don't know and, and where you've been to where you are now to where you hope to be. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, VMware is uh, an 18-year-old company, yeah. so we're one of those rambunctious teenagers <laughs> that's about to go to college, so to speak. Uh, and a significant part of that, we were inside EMC, acquired by them, a public company. And it's all about growth and innovation. Mm -hmm. We've been very fortunate to be one of the fastest growing software companies in history, uh, one of the highest NPS uh, customer satisfaction, and, and the breadth now has stretched from the data center to stuff on the client side. We'll mm -hmm. talk about that. And for us, you know, the Dell EMC merger initially was tough because our shareholders or public shareholders didn't like it. You know, sort of almost like if you told us this was going to happen, I would invest in EMC stock as opposed to mm. the stock. Mm. So our stock took a little bit of a beating, and then we made things worse because some of the things that we did in 2015, our own execution challenges. So not that long ago, 15, 18 months, our stock price is half, at it, half the price it was, about yep. 45, 50 bucks a share. But, you know, since then, especially the year 2016, this partnership with Dell EMC has become one of the key contributors. Fixing our cloud strategy was the other, and then just plain execution. Right. Today, you know, the stock price is double. It is, the morale is higher. We're really leaning in very heavily to this Dell partnership. It's a much different day in VMware. <laughs> it that's is. A, that's it is. a two year trip, yeah. And, and, and I know you're, you're constantly traveling, so you're out there and you're meeting with customers day in and day out. What are some of the things that you're hearing? I mean, what are the top of mind things that, that customers are interested in getting a deeper understanding around? Yeah, you know, the bulk of my time before VMware, I was at SAP, so I'd spend a lot of time with CFOs and CIOs and line of business executives about on the application side. Here at VMware, we're a leading infrastructure player, and there's probably three trends I hear about the most from the CIOs, uh, CTOs that I spend time talking to. Number one is they want to understand how is the world of cloud going to transform what they do into the future? How is the data center moving the cloud, and what type of bridge is there going to be between those two worlds? Number two, the, the end user landscape is increasingly becoming you know, mobile driven. Mm -hmm. sure. How is mobile going to transform the way in which you work? Uh, and mobile doesn't mean just a device. Mobile could mean on the move, it's a verb too. And third, as you think about both the data center transformation of the cloud, end user transformation of desktops to mobile, how do you secure that? So I think cloud, right. mobile, and security, when I talk to CIOs and CTOs, are uh, the three things I hear about the most. And, and I think one of the things that you're famous for is, is your ability to tell that story, not just that story, but a story, and, and being able to connect it um, to, to a customer and to their real situation. Why is it so important to be able to, to do that type of thing and to be able to be such an effective storyteller? Well, you guys are in the production business here, right? <laughs> I mean, everything is about a story. And I think in IT, unfortunately, we've made storytelling really complicated because we rely on PowerPoint too much. We befuddle simple concepts with an alphabet soup of acronyms that nobody cares about, <laughs> A, B, C, X, Y, Z. It's just, you know, mm -hmm. you got to go back to basics of every story is told to a kid. Once upon a time, they lived happily ever after, and then there's <laughs> a bunch of stuff in the middle, right? There was war, there was love, there was a hero, there was a villain, an antagonist, a protagonist. Mm -hmm. So we, we want to go back to those basics, right? Once upon a time, VMware was a company that thought through innovation, 18 mm -hmm. years later, here we are, here's our vision of the world. And we have some you know, opposing forces, those are the villains. Uh, how are we combating that? Uh, so very simply put, we want to be the de facto backbone for people's data center as they modernize it, help them in this journey to the cloud, help them in their transition to mobile, and secure everything between those ends. That's kind of the way we tell sure. our story. And then if you have one minute in an elevator, that's all you have. <laughs> if you have five minutes, in fact, I think it's harder to tell a story the shorter it is. You know, and often we get used to yep. 45 minutes. Right. And, and those stories are often boring. 
But if you had only one minute or five minutes, you you, you get Chris pretty quickly. Uh, the elevator test is one of the great tests in terms of pitching. In terms, it's right. sort of renowned in the in the field as yes. can you get that that pitch done in, in a minute? And I, I like the way you talk about that. Uh, we were born. Uh, we had some struggles. We had some ups and downs. That we lived happily ever after. That's where VMware wants to we be. Do, the happily ever doesn't finish, but right. we're getting there. Right. right. And uh, so for you, uh, so and I, you summarized some of the last two years of the journey, sort of for us. Yeah. What have you seen as the opposing forces that you've had to contend with that you're looking to conquer in the next? Yeah, I, I think term? one of the things we try to do is to ask ourselves, what are the types of tectonic forces that could completely disrupt us? Right. And then use those forces not as headwind, but tailwind, right? There's a powerful, whether it's a flying a plane or a boat, if you can transfer the, 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 the force that's coming against you into something that you work with. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about two of them that I think are potentially threats to VMware, but we've actually found a way to make them a tailwind. The entire move to the public cloud could be a headwind sure. that basically disrupts us completely. If all of our roughly 40, 50 million workloads move into a public cloud, you could argue we're dead, long-term VMware. We've now made that now a strategy where we take advantage of this, announce a partnership with IBM Cloud, announce a strategic partnership with AWS, key partnerships with Dell assets like VirtuStream, mm -hmm. 4,000 other cloud providers. That's taking that headwind and making a tailwind. The second key threat is containers. If the entire world moves away from a VM and gets premised on the fact you don't need that but it's all a container world, we were one of the first to embrace containers, uh, built our own container relevant product, Photon, embrace Kubernetes, Docker. Uh, yesterday we announced something very strategic with Pivotal, called a developer-ready infrastructure. If you talked to Pat and you heard his keynote, that was one of the key points. So all of this is part of converting that headwind into a tailwind. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know there'll be probably other threats that we'll see in the in the subsequent years. Those are two that we've taken very seriously uh, and adapted our strategy accordingly. So I I just have one more question, sure. and, and I apologize, but I am going to go off topic. Okay, so are you looking forward to the concert tonight? You know, unfortunately, I would have missed it, but I'm a oh. big Gwen Stefani fan. You are. And I, I'm a musician. You are a musician. Okay? So. I love. Uh, well, I, I love any kind of music, but I'm mostly blues and jazz. Blues and jazz. Uh, but I'll listen to good music wherever it is. Are you in a band? <laughs> I, I've done bands in the past, not actively now. Now it's, you know, my life is trying to teach my kids how to play the there piano. There you go. So, As a family band is the next way to go. Uh, we'll have to get there but, before. We've got a little while before our kids can become a band. But we're working on it. I like it. That's a good story to tell, too. We'll follow up on that. It's a great way to understand how VMware is working yeah. and where they've been and what that journey may be. I look forward to catching up with you at least in probably in a half year and then a year again to yeah. see how that story's played out. Now that happily ever after is still in progress. Sanjay, thanks for being with us. Thank you very much. All right. Sanjay. Uh, much more conversation and story happening. We're over there at the desk. Sam, what do you got?